Hi everyone, let's talk about Vieta's formulas for polynomials. Let's say we have a polynomial f of x with complex or real coefficients that equals a n x to the n, a n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, all the way through to a 2 x squared plus a 1 x plus a naught. So by the fundamental theorem of algebra, we know that this factor is in the following way with the coefficient a n out front, x minus r1, x minus r2, all the way through to x minus r n. And there's a unique factorization up to the factors being rearranged. And we call these r1, r2, all the way through r n, the roots. And some of them might repeat, in which case we say its multiplicity is greater than one. But when we write it out, the roots are r1, r2, all the way through to rn, and we include the repeats, sort of like in a multi-set instead of a set. And what we want to do is relate coefficients. These are an, an minus 1, all the way through to a2, a1, and a0. We want to relate them to the roots r1, r2, all the way through to rn. We, we want to create some equations that relate them together. And there is one general way of doing it, which is to take this equation and expand it. And then we're going to compare terms, uh, coefficients with this equation. So let's do an example with a quadratic in the quadratic case what we have is that x squared let's say we divide out by the the um, leading coefficient so that we get a monic we get x squared plus a1 over a2 since we divided out by the leading coefficient x plus a naught over a2 is equal to, in factored form, x minus r1, x minus r2. And notice that there's no coefficient of a2 over here since we divided out by it. And if we expand it, we get that this is x squared minus r1 plus r2, x plus r1, r2. And now what we'll do is that we'll compare coefficients. So the stuff in the pink matches up, and then the stuff in the blue, or light blue, match up as well. So what we get is r1 plus r2 is equal to negative a1 over a2. And we also get that r1 times r2 is equal to a0 over a2. Let's repeat the exercise for a cubic before we move on to the most general case. So we have our quadratic up here. Let's do a cubic. Let's say we have x cubed plus a1 over, sorry, that's an a2 over a3 x squared plus a1 over a3 x plus a naught over a3. And we're going to factor that as x minus r1, x minus r2, x minus r3. Now we're going to expand it. So we get x cubed minus r1 plus r2 plus r3 x squared plus r1, r2, r1, r3, r2, r3 x and our last term is negative r1 r2 r3 with the invisible x to the power of 0. So let's compare coefficients. We have 
a2 over a3 and negative r1, r2, r3 as a sum. So r1 plus r2 plus r3 is equal to negative a2 over a3. Then we have a1 over a3 and this symmetric sum over here. So r1, r2 plus r1, r3 plus r2, r3 is equal to a1 over a3. And the last one is a0 over a3 and we match that to negative r1, r2, r3. So we get r1, r2, r3 is equal to negative a0 over a3. So just a couple of patterns here. First of all, we have alternating terms. So we have negative here, a positive here, and a negative here. So it looks like we're going to have negative 1 to the power of k of some sort. And the other thing is that these sums that we have, they're symmetric in the roots involved. And that's why we call them symmetric sums. In fact, we call them elementary symmetric sums because out of these symmetric sums, we can build all other symmetric sums. I believe that's called the fundamental theorem of symmetric sums. Okay, so we have focused on a few small cases, two small cases, and now we're going to look at the general idea. So the general idea is that if f of x equals to a n x to the n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 all the way through to a 2 x squared plus a 1 x plus a naught and that is equal to x minus r1, x minus r2, all the way through to x minus rn with a coefficient of an out here. We're going to divide out by an, so we get x to the n is e x to the n plus an minus 1 over an x to the n minus 1, all the way through to a2 over an x squared plus a1 over a n x plus a naught over a n and that's going to equal x minus r1 x minus r2 all the way through to x minus r n and now we're going to expand it so let's look at the coefficient of x to the n minus k for k equals to 1, 2, 3, all the way through to n. So we're going to be looking at the coefficient of this all the way through to this, this, and, and this. The rules of expansion say that if we have x to the k, sorry, n minus k, then the other k terms will choose some of these negative ri's. So we're going to have k of those that we're going to choose. So what that is going to equal is the following coefficient. It's going to be the sum over the k tuples. So i1 less than i2 all the way through to i k less than or equal to n and we're going to have r i 1 r i 2 all the way through to r i k and that's going to be the coefficient of this and that in turn oh sorry there's also a negative 1 to the power of k that, that's actually really quite important that, that that accounts for the these negative signs and the alternating pattern that we saw earlier. And that's going to equal a n minus k over a n x to the n minus k. So 
really we, we can we can get rid of these x to the n minus k. Just know that that's the that's the coefficient. That's the term whose coefficient we're looking at. So that is Vieta's formulas that you have an equality between this almost disgusting looking sum versus the ratio of these two coefficients. And uh, I just want to show you an easier way of writing it out. Or it's it's a bit it's a bit more of an advanced way, but it is easier. You, you avoid a lot of the indices. So we have this sum here, negative one, negative one to the k times one is less than or equal to i one less than i two less than all the way through to i k less than or equal to n r i one r i two all the way through to r i k and what we'll do is we'll use a certain notation. n is equal to the set 1, 2, 3, all the way through to n. So we call it the nth section of the positive integers. And what we'll do is we'll write this sum as the sum over subsets j of the section of n, the nth section of the positive integers such that the cardinality of j is equal to k and we'll take the product of the elements of j and those are the ij's and of course we have a coefficient of negative 1 to the k and that will equal a n minus k over a n so I just want to show you this the second way of writing this sum of products because this this kind of way of writing things does come in handy for example in the principle of inclusion exclusion so before we end I'll show you a couple of concrete examples which are the two most important examples the first one is for the sum of the roots so we get r1 plus r2 plus r3 is uh, all the way through to rn is equal to negative 1 to the 1 of a n minus 1 over a n notice that this negative 1 to the k I brought it over here that's actually the traditional way of writing it and this is equal to negative a n minus 1 over a n and the other one is the product of the roots so r1 r2 r3 all the way through to rn is equal to negative 1 to the n of a naught over a n so these are the two most useful instances the last thing i want to say is don't forget to divide by the a n when you're using these formulas because it's very easy to get used to the monic case where a n is equal to 1 and forget to divide by it. So you should always remember to do that. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.